Hi, I'm Valerie Getch. In today's Lightroom tutorial, I want to show you how to use a graduated filter. This is one of my favorite tools. You can use it to make local corrections to just part of your image versus global corrections that affect the whole image. I use it most often on skies to make them look more dramatic or to adjust the exposure in just part of the frame. I also like to use them for enhancing tint and temperature to certain areas without affecting the whole image. I'll show you how this works. Hi, this is Valerie Getch from Valerie's Photo Channel. Before I get into the tutorial, I wanted to quickly tell you about my free Color Illustrated Guide to Digital Photography Basics. It will help you improve your digital photography skills and understand how to use your camera's manual settings. You can get it for free at my website, valeriegetch.com forward slash digital hyphen photography hyphen basics. The graduated filter is located in this toolbar here under the histogram in the develop module. You can either click on this icon or you can use the keyboard shortcut M, that's M as in Mary, and you get the, this panel that looks a lot like the sliders you see in a basics panel, except for these sliders are used to apply local adjustments rather than affecting the entire image. And if you don't see this full menu here, the, all of these um, tools or sliders, and you can barely see it, but there's a little arrow here on the right, and click that in case you get this. So this is, this is what you might see, and this is an amount slider to adjust the intensity of the, of, um, of the effect, but uh, just click the little arrow to open it up. So make sure that you have your sliders to start um, zeroed out or set to the default and if they aren't then just double click on the word effect and that will reset everything at once otherwise you can individually reset so for example just click on the individual name to reset it to zero so we have this image here of a shot I took at Laguna Beach and you can see that the sky and the mountain area look a little hazy, so I want to make them richer and more vibrant and reduce some of the haze. So I'm going to use the graduated filter to do this. And I'm going to start by, I think I'm going to reduce the exposure a little. I'm gonna go down minus, whoops, I'm gonna try about minus 60. And I'm going to increase the contrast a bit, maybe up around 20, a little too much maybe. Let's try 22 to start and I'm going to up the clarity and since when you add clarity it kind of reduces the saturation a little so I'm going to add a little saturation as well. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to start dragging from the top of the image downward and when you hold down the shift key it makes the gradient even. So I'm dragging down and you can see we already have a nicer blue sky there. And so when you apply the filter it will be a gradual effect so you start at the point where you want the effect to be the strongest so it starts at 100% at the top and then it goes down to 0% at the bottom. You can make the gradient really close together or stretch it out by dragging it out and making the gradient much smoother. So you can see that I dragged it out and made it, made it pretty smooth, but if I grab this bottom bar, the white line, and I can just move it up and you can see that the bars are getting closer together and you see that now the, the effect is just up at the top. So that's what I mean by making it a small effect or a larger more subtle effect. And you can also, um, when you get to the little pin here, you can see that um, I now I've got a double headed arrow. And so when I click on that or hold it down, I can turn the gradient and angle it if I wanted it to. Angle it either way. And so you see that you can stretch it out, um, make it bigger, make it smaller, angle it, uh, and you can move the gradient simply by pulling on the pin and dragging it as you like. So if you want to see the before and after of your gradient effect then just click on this little button here and it will temporarily turn it off so you can see the difference. See we have a much richer sky now. But 
I think I want to make the sky still a little bluer. So I'm going to move the temperature slider a little bit to the left. I'm going to try maybe, oh, let's make it, how about minus 22? That looks, that looks better. But I think that it makes the, um, the mountain area look a little bit too blue. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another tool. I'm going to use the adjustment brush, um, which is this far right one here, or you can hit the K for a shortcut. And I'm going to zero out the effects. So I'm going to start with the defaults. And then I'm going to move my temperature a little bit to the right, maybe about 15 or so. And I'm going to move the tint towards the green end, maybe about 24, 22-ish. Let's try that. And then you see I have a round um, brush tool with a plus in it, and I can use my mouse to make it bigger or smaller. So also I'm going to click this little box here to show the mask overlay, and that will show what I'm painting so that I know where I've been and so I didn't, don't miss anything. And then I'm just going to paint on the mountain area. And then this will adjust only this area. And so this is another really, really invaluable tool that you will use a lot in conjunction or separately from the graduated filter. So these, are, uh, these two tools are really going to come in handy many, many, many times for you. So then I'm going to uncheck that so we can see what we've done here. And I think that looks a little bluer, or a little, not bluer, a little greener rather. But I can turn off the effect here. And there, you see that looks pretty blue and that looks a touch greener. So I think that looks better. So there you go. So um, that's using both the graduated filter and then a little bit of the adjustment. Now I want to go back to the graduated filter and let's go back here for a sec. And there are other um, sliders here for sharpness, nor noise, moire, and defringe. You may find occasion to use sharpness or noise. Um, but I have never used these last two sliders, and um, you're probably not going to get a lot of use out of them either. The main ones that you'll be using will be these in the first two sections. The graduated filter is definitely a tool you'll want to experiment with. This is going to be one of your main tools that you'll use all the time, especially when you want to adjust the exposure in just part of your image. And there's many more uses. With this tool and the selective adjustment brush, you'll probably rarely need to go into Photoshop to make adjustments. I hope you're enjoying my tutorials. If so, please hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment too. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you'll get all of my weekly Lightroom tutorials. Thanks. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Lightroom tutorial. Stay tuned for more tips and tutorials as we work our way through the Lightroom workflow. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of them. I also want to give you a copy of my free guide to Digital Photography Basics to help you improve your photography skills and understand your how to use your camera's manual settings. You can get it for free at my website, www.valeriegetch.com forward slash digital hyphen photography hyphen basics. Now go out with your camera and have fun, and I'll see you back here soon.